So anyway, I was just saying, I'll give you two sheets of paper. One will have the questions, 10 multiple choice questions. The other will be a bubble form. You're going to walk out with what? The, the what? Not the bubble form, the questions, okay? And so that then, no, I have two sections that you will have different quizzes. Uh, they might share one or two questions, but they're mostly going to be completely different. There'll be similar difficulty. I haven't made one a lot more difficult than the other, or have I? No, I'm just joking. I haven't. Uh, so there'll be the same difficulty, but just different quizzes. So you can talk to people about it if you want, but it's not going to help them any. In fact, it might hurt them if they think that they have the same quiz as you. All right, I had one question that came up over email. I want to look at that. This is the fall 19 exam, uh, question number three. By the way, so if you're here, you get credit. You don't have to do the sending me your notes and all that business. But uh, just make sure that I got your name. I'm pretty sure I got everybody except for a few people that just came in. Uh, so a student asked me about this question, number three. Uh, and they wanted to know something about why do you compare the different parts of the equation. Anytime you have one like this where I have things that are being added or subtracted, the units of each individual part have to all be the same. Uh, and I tell the, in the question, I say that this equation is dimensionally correct, so I know that the units of each individual part are the same. So, in order to find the units of R, I just need to compare this to either one of these parts, either this one or this one. You can choose either one. Now, there is an easier one. Which one should I compare it to, the first one or the last one? That would be a little easier. The first one. The first one's easier. Let me show you why. Because I can say RV is equal to uh, MV squared over T. Or it's not really equal, but the units should be the same for both of those. They should have the same units. Uh, and since I want to know the units of R, I want to isolate R. But this one's simpler because I can get rid of this V with one of those Vs. I can divide through the entire equation by V and say that R has units of MV over T. Now, I could have done a similar thing where I said that RV is equivalent to this mx squared over t cubed, and then I'd have to divide through both sides by v, but it's just a little easier to do it this way. Then I put in the units for m, that's kilograms, v is meters per second, and then t is 1 over seconds. So that'll give me the units for r, which is kilogram meters per second squared. Kilogram meters per second squared. Okay? All right, are there other particular questions that y'all want to look at? That's generally how we'll run the help sessions. If you don't have questions, I can go through and we'll just sort of skim through and work questions. But are there particular questions that y'all have? It takes a couple of seconds for y'all to get brave enough to ask. Particular questions? You feel like, yeah, go ahead, Lucy. 11 on this one? Sure. Okay, so this gets into chapter 2. So not, not on the quiz. If you're uncertain, there was always, there'll always be an order. So that's where the break occurs. If you're not sure, look on that, that, that table that I put on the test site. And uh, if that's still unclear, just send me an email. I'll let you know. Is that okay not to do 11 right now? All right. Um, well, you want to go back to the first, the, like the last semester exam? I am limiting to the last decade of exams. So as you're going back, if you go back to, you know, fall 08 or whatever, that's too far. That's only the last decade, back to 2013. Um, so you'll have one or two questions that are estimations. Like, for example, this length of your leg. The length of your leg is what? It's about... A meter or so and so that's about 100 centimeters uh, the the area of your paper how big is your paper well it's about 20 by 30 centimeters so 20 by 30 centimeters that would be well 600 square centimeters so you need to have an idea of what is a centimeter what is a meter what is a kilogram and then be able to apply those in calculating the area or volume of an object. Often I'll do an area or volume question. Those are a little more difficult. Are there particular ones here that y'all look at? Sig figs, dimensional analysis, trigonometry. Ms. 
it's going to be a boring help session if y'all don't have questions. How y'all feel about the dimensional analysis? Would y'all like to work one of those? I find that those are probably the most difficult that students have. Like this number three, you're likely to have one like this. I have them on a lot of different exams. Um, just tell me which of these are dimensionally correct. So here I have VT equals X plus AT squared. Remember, if I have one like this where I'm adding up uh, different expressions, that the units of every part have to be the same. So V is meters per second. T is seconds. By the way, I'm going to give you those units. So I'll tell you what the units of X, V, and A, and T are. I'll give that to you tomorrow on the quiz. Uh, the seconds cancel there equals the units of X, which is meters. So, so far I'm okay. Plus AT squared. That's meters per second squared times T squared. So that gives me meters. So question or option one is correct. So I can get rid of that one. Now let's look at these others. Um, remember when I said, I said this in class that if I have uh, an equation, I should try to simplify it as much as possible. How can I simplify the second one here? I get rid of the what? The t's? Oh, no, I can't get rid of the t's because one's in the numerator and one's in the denominator. So I guess I could multiply through t on both sides, but I'd get t squared on the left and then no t on the right. So I can't get rid of those t. Be careful. There is a variable I can get rid of, though. What is it? I can get rid of v. If I multiply both sides by v, that gets rid of that variable v. So now I have, actually, well, let's just do it. I have uh, t is seconds equals to x, that's meters. Uh, t is seconds, so it's 1 over seconds. And remember, a is meters per second squared. So how am I going to write it here? That's right, because it's in the denominator, I flip that fraction, so I get second squared over meter. So that cancels there. This cancels with one of those. And it looks like that one is correct as well. So I can get rid of this option and I can get rid of this option because I know it has to include both one and two. Uh, finally, I have to see if three is right. That'll be the deci decision between B and E. Um, I can get rid of the M, right? Get rid of that. And remember, I don't worry about these constants. That's not a big does I assume that they have no units at all. So I have x, which is in meters, a, which is in meters per second squared, is equal to meters per second, but it's squared, so it's meters squared per second squared. Notice when I square this, that becomes meters squared per second squared. So what's the right answer here? E is the right answer. Okay? So you almost certainly have one like that, where you have to tell me which of these equations are dimensionally correct. That is an important tool. Uh, it's important just to help you exercise your algebra, but also just looking at equations in that way just to see if they make sense. I mean, that's really what we're doing. Make, are they making sense? Y'all okay with the trig? You're going to have two questions for trig. I hope that those are relatively easy. Those are relatively easy for you. Let's just review them because we don't want to miss those two. Those should be two good, easy questions for you. Uh, you're going to have one like number seven, where you have to find the length of the side. So you're going to use your Pythagorean, Pythagorean theorem. Uh, the side d squared plus 3 squared is equal to 6 squared. So that's uh, d is equal to the square root of 36 minus 27. Right, 6 squared is 36. 3 squared, oh, not 27, I'm sorry, uh, 9. Uh, 36 is that's the square root of 27. What well, square root of 27? Is it 5.2? It must be 5.2. Is that right? 5.2? Yes, that's right. Uh, that's equal to 5.2. Uh, the triangle will be drawn to scale. It might not be drawn exactly, like if you got out your ruler, that might not be exactly 5.2, but it will be drawn to scale. So you can just double check this answer. You know, this side appears to be bigger than 3, so I know that it's not that. It has to be bigger than that, so it makes sense. At least that one does. It also appears to be bigger than 4, I would say. 
but you can just use that as a guide to check your answer. Your triangle won't be drawn all wonky. It'll be drawn mostly to scale. And then also need to know how to find the angle. Here, I have the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. So which trig function would I use? If I have the adjacent and the hypotenuse, that would be the cosine. Remember, you're Sokotoa, so that would be C-A-H, right? So the cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Uh, that's 3 over 6. So that's the inverse cosine of 1 half. Um, what's the answer there? 60? 60, right. Um, so D is the right answer. Also notice here that this, since the triangle is drawn to scale, that I could get rid of three answers. What three answers could I get rid of in this question? Uh, out of hand. Like I could say those cannot possibly be right. I can get rid of A because A is only true for equilateral right triangles. When both sides are equal, A is equal to 45 degrees. So I can get rid of A completely. And I also know that that angle theta is bigger or smaller than 45. Bigger, right? I mean, we just found the answer is bigger. The reason that it's bigger is because it's opposite this big side. So I can get rid of A, B, and E all out of hand. Uh, and then I can I have a pretty good chance of getting that question right, right? Uh, you still have to pick between those two options. You don't want to miss those easy ones. I think that the trig is, is the trig easy. It's easy? Okay, good. Don't miss those questions. Look, y'all, be careful just with careless errors. Take a big, deep breath. Y'all relax. Some of you are going to go into the quiz and you're going to be really nervous. Are you going to be nervous? I hate taking tests because I just get really anxious about it. But practice is your friend because the more you practice, the more comfortable you'll feel when you go into the quiz or exam. So that's true for everything. It's true for the MCAT too, right? It's true for whatever exams you're taking that you need to practice, practice, practice. Now let's just look around. So uh, you're going to have some of these unit conversions where you have to convert uh, cube or squared units. So make sure you know how to do that. You're going to have some metric things most likely where you have to convert between your metric prefixes. Know those especially kilo, centi, and milli. Yeah. Number 12. No, number 12 is a chapter 2 question. So remember, look at that table on the website. Let's go back down to some older exams. Have you all been working the exams pretty consistently over the last week? Yeah, that'll help you a lot. Okay, if you've been doing that every day or every, you know, every other day or so, that, that'll help you in the quiz a lot. All right, let's see here. Sig figs. We haven't done any of those. You're going to have at least one question. Usually I just have one sig fig question. Um, so remember with sig figs, you want to follow the order of operations. And then as you follow the order of operations, in this case, I always do parentheses first. As I follow the order of operations, I, uh, I keep the proper number of sig figs. So this would be 3.25 plus 45 divided by what? One, right? Very good. And then that would be 3.25 plus, well, 45 divided by one, I would record that as, no, not 45, but 50, right? I would record it as 50 because I have to keep one sig fig. One only has one sig fig, so I could record it as 50. And then I keep the lowest number of decimal places, so the answer is going to be 53, which has two decimal places. So C is the right answer. Practice those. You will have sig figs, and they will be mixed operations like that, where you just follow the order of operations, and when you keep, uh, when you add, multiply or divide, you keep the lowest number of sig figs. When you add or subtract, keep the lowest number of decimal places. Uh, you're going to have, I think, just one question about standards. Uh, which of these is the standard for the second? Actually, no, I think you might have two questions. Uh, the standard for the second, y'all know this, what is it? The cesium atom, that's the frequency of the cesium atom, that's what you're looking for. But uh, also be careful because there are some others here, like for example, this is the standard for the kilogram, and this is the standard 
for the meter. So I'll mix in those that are true standards for other values. So don't get confused by that. Make sure that you know what the, the correct standards are for length, mass, and time. Remember for the meter, it's based on the speed of light, how far light travels in a certain amount of time. For the kilogram, it's based on the, the Planck constant, that H constant. Uh, it has to do with a, a watt balance. That's not important. You're looking for that keyword Planck's constant. And then for the meter, or uh, for the second time, it's based on the cesium atom, the frequency of the cesium atom. Okay? I'm not trying to trick you. I just want to make sure that you know it. But don't be tripped up because you'll see some words that look familiar but are in the wrong places. Whew. Uh, trig. Other particular questions that y'all have? Let's jog your memory. I thought I saw a hand up. Is that right? Okay. Let's... No way. Yeah, what you got? Yeah. Number 11 on fall 20. Yeah, I really recommend that you uh, print the exams out. I think that that really helps you to practice sort of recreating the situation in the classroom and even give yourself a time limit. You're only going to have 20 minutes to do 10 questions. So it's, I think this quiz won't be that bad. Like that'll be plenty of time for you, but give yourself a time limit when you're doing this practicing at home, uh, just to try to recreate that environment as much as possible. All right, so let's look at this one, right? Uh, yeah, so I have a piece of paper. It's eight and a half by 11. What is the area in square centimeters? A um, couple ways you could do this. You could convert the inches to centimeters to start, or you could calculate the area of the paper in square inches and then convert that to square centimeters. Let's do that. So the area is equal to 8.5 times 11. That's going to give it to us in square inches. I get 93.5. So that's 93.5 inches squared. Um, yeah, that's 94. So my area is 94 inches squared. Look, A says 94. Is that the answer? No, right? So a tip for you on my exams, that when I write out exams, I'll go through and I'll make the mistakes that I know that many of you will make, because I know what mistakes you make. I've been teaching this class for 20 years. I know what students do wrong. So I'll make those mistakes for you, and I'll put those answers in. So I know that some of you will calculate the area just with the inches, and that they'll get 94. They'll see it in the options and record that as an answer. I'm not trying to trick you. I'm really not. But I want to make sure that you understand what you're doing. And if you put 94, then you don't really understand. Okay? Is that clear? So just because you get an answer doesn't mean it's right. In fact, oh, no, don't get that look. It's going to be okay that, you know, just check back over your work. You'll have plenty of time tomorrow, so just check back over your work and make sure that you, you made all the right, right, all the right decisions. Anyway, so I want to convert it to centimeters squared. So I say that, um, gosh, one inch... Oh, excuse me, 12 inches is one foot. Uh, I have to square that term. That gets rid of the inches here and leaves me with feet squared. Uh, I have 3.28 feet is one meter. But I have to square this term as well. So it's uh, because I want to get rid of the feet squared. So that cancels out that. And then finally, I know that in one meter, there are 100 centimeters, but I have to square that term too because it gets rid of the meter squared. And then when I do all that, um, B is the right answer. Should be B. Isn't that right? Yeah. Well, look, I could have just done this from the very beginning, uh, like at least to help get rid of some answers. Because well, we just did a question that said, what is, the, what is the size of this in centimeters? 
right? And we said that, well, it's about 30 on this side and about 20 on this side. That's about 600 square centimeters. So I'm feeling pretty good about my answer right now because I can estimate the size of this paper in square centimeters, and I've just calculated it given the, uh, you know, the conversion factors. Feeling pretty good. 100% confident on that answer. Y'all too? That's a tough question there. Appreciate you asking that because it has so many terms to convert each of the, the feet, the uh, inches to feet to meters to centimeters. And it also requires that you know the metric prefixes. Uh, again, the only metric prefixes that I'm going to require you, is this true? I think this is true. Y'all can call me on it tomorrow if it's not. But you need to know centi, milli, and kilo. Centi, milli, and kilo. Uh, I didn't do those in the right order, did I? 10 to the minus 2, 10 to the minus 3, and 10 to the 3rd. We'll use those smaller and bigger prefixes in later chapters. But for now, that's really the only ones you need to know. Centi, milli, and kilo. Yeah. All right. Other questions, y'all? Other just particular types of questions, dimensional analysis, uh, significant figures, trigonometry, unit conversion. I think that's it. Oh, or sig figs. Yeah, Gabe? All right, yeah, those are probably the hardest, the dimensional analysis. I think that's hardest for most of the students. So, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's do it. Um, well, here's one. Uh, we'll do number three and number four. I'm going to do them a little more slowly. I know I'm going kind of fast, so let's, let's spend a little bit of time on this. Uh, so, I have this. I want to know the units of R. Remember on these questions, the first thing that you do is you solve the equation for R. So in order to get R on the same side, by the way, this is uh, fall 20, number three. To do this one, I solve the equation for R. To do so, I multiply both sides by V over X. V over X on both sides. So I know that R then is equal to AV cubed over XT. Then I put in the units for A, V, X, and T. So A is meters per second squared. V is meters per second, but it's cubed. Watch how I do this. I then write the things in the denominator, but I write them as 1 over. So 1 over meters and 1 over seconds. You can choose how you do that, but I find that that's easier. If I sort of separate the variables in that way, I write the things in the numerator first, and then I write the things in the denominator second, but I write them as 1 over, 1 over. And if I have a, a fraction in the denominator, that's when I flip it, so when it comes up. But I didn't have a fraction this time. Then I can simplify some things. The meters cancel, uh, and that's all that cancels. So I'm left with meters cubed over seconds to the sixth. I look at my answers, that looks like A is the right answer there. Okay? Let me give you another tip, just in general for this class. Write out all of your work, especially on the quiz tomorrow, because you'll have plenty of time for it. I think for most of you, 20 minutes will be more than enough. Uh, write out all your work. When you write down things, it allows you a couple things. First, you just process it better in your mind as you're writing down the numbers. And then also later, if you come back and just check your work, you'll see what you did, and you'll probably be able to spot mistakes a lot more easily if you've actually written down what you do. I don't know how many times I've seen students where they've done the work in their calculator, and they've made a mistake in their calculator, but they didn't see it. They came up with an answer, even an answer that was on the test, but it wasn't right because they made some mistake in the calculator. And if they had written it down, they would have seen that, um, that they that they would have had a mistake, they would have gotten it right. So what are you going to do? Are you going to write on your quiz? Look, I wrote a paper uh, a number of years ago where we uh, scanned all of the exams of students in the class, and we uh, determined how much each student wrote. We just count the number of pixels that the students used to write on the test. We like digitized all their exams. And we found by far students that wrote more in their exams made a significantly higher grade on those exams. They just sort of knew what was going on for one, so they wrote down more, but also they were processing what they were doing. So 
Write stuff on your exam. Even if it seems simple, write it down. You'll have time. Don't worry, you'll have time. Just take time to write down those things, a lot like I'm doing here. Uh, I like number one. As I don't know if this is on your quiz tomorrow, but I like this question. Uh, to estimate the area of this shape in rambits. And I give you the length of a rambit is this. So like this is one rambit, this is two rambits, this is one rambit, and this is, uh, well, this is one, one, and one. So I want to estimate the size of this. Um, this square is one times one rambit. So it's a one square rambit. I have another square that's right here that's also one by one. And then I have two half squares up top. So what would, how would you estimate the area of that in rambits squared? What do you think? Well, look out, if this is one, one square rambit, one square rambit, here's two half square rambits. So what's the average, or what's the total area? Three. Three, right, three square rambits. I like this. This is not the only question that I've done like this. I've done other questions where I give you just a shape, a circle, a square, or whatever, and ask you to uh, tell me what is the area. So it's three rambits squared. You all know what this space bar on a computer keyboard, what its what its area is? Can you all pick from these four options? What do you think? I'm looking at a space bar, so it's easy. But think about your space bar. It's about yay long. It's about yay wide. What is that in square centimeters? C. Huh? C. C is right. It's about one centimeter wide and about 10 centimeters long. So it's 10 square centimeters. All right, let's do this other. So we were, gave it us about the dimensional analysis. Let's do these two. So which of these is dimensionally correct? Um, First of all, I want to remember that these numbers right here don't matter. And then also these little knots there, they don't matter either. So I have x squared over t. Oh, by the way, I can get rid of this x with one of these. So I'm just left with x over t, which is meters over seconds. And then a is meters square, uh, excuse me, meters per second squared times seconds. Uh, sometimes I'll write it as a second over one, just to help me remember that it's in the numerator. That seconds cancels with that one. Look, that one's dimensionally correct. That one's correct. Um, X equals VT plus AT. Uh, if you're clever, you can probably look at that and tell right away, is it dimensionally correct or not? What do y'all think? You might want to venture a guess on that. Dimensionally correct or not? Not dimensionally correct. Because look, I'm multiplying V times T, and I'm also multiplying A times T. So I know that these two don't have the same units. But in order to be dimensionally correct, every term has to be dimensionally correct. If you didn't see that right off, that's okay. You just still follow the same procedure. Look, I would say X is in meters, V is in meters per second, times T, which is in seconds. All right, that cancels out. Looking good so far, but then I say meters per second squared, times seconds, that cancels and leaves me with meters per second. So two is not an option. That means I can get rid of this one, and this one, and this one. So it's either, oh wait, no, did I do that right? Oh, it has to be, I can get rid of this one too. It has to be D. It has to be D, uh, one and three. Let's just double check that. Uh, that's gonna be V squared, which is meters per second squared. Uh, equals meters per second, but it's squared, both of the terms, and then meters per second squared times meters, which is also meters squared per second squared, so that is dimensionally correct. All right, when you're doing those problems, you're going to have one or two or maybe even three problems where you have multiple statements and you have to assess whether they're correct or not. Uh, that's a great way to do it, is to go through and pick the ones that you know are correct and then get rid of the multiple choice answers that you know that are that are uh, rejected because of that. That you, what do you like you, uh, what do you call it when you get rid of something? Eliminate. Thank you, Danny. That you eliminate them in that way. Okay. More questions, y'all? Particular types of questions.
Exam 1, Paul 13. Okay, I do go back that far. Um, but as you practice exams, you'll find that they're all a lot the same. Oh, I don't, fall 13? Okay, I don't have it in this particular, or maybe it's, it might, might be out of order. Let me just pull it up on the website. What's the, uh, oh, I used to call them quizzes. My exams. I thought that it would make students feel better if the exams were called quizzes. It didn't work. They didn't feel any better. They were still sort of stressed out about them. Um, what was the question number? Number seven. Number seven. Oh, that is a chapter two question. So not on your exam. Yeah. This was also back when I, did, I gave five quizzes. I gave five quizzes. I found it was too much. All right. At what point, what? Well, it would be, uh, yeah, I would pick up in 14. Like if I, 2014 to 2023, that's 10, that's 10 years. Where were y'all in 2014? Yeah, Gabe? How do we, uh, so, a good question. Uh, there is this document right here, the key to questions that give those questions. So, for example, chapter one questions are these numbers back to 2014. It doesn't have 2023, but I can tell you 2023 right now. Uh, 2023 goes up through problem number 10. And usually it's the first 10 or 11 questions. If you get to a question that has Velocity and acceleration, and they're asking you to calculate some velocity or acceleration, and that's too far. That's chapter two. Please right. send me an email too if you're not certain about it. Okay. All right. Other questions, y'all? Is this helpful for you? Yeah. Yeah, number nine on 2018. Oh, I'll be done in just a second, okay? So y'all just hang tight. All right, can you hang tight for a few minutes? All right. Um, I know the other people have left, but if y'all come, I, I prefer that you stay the whole time unless you have some reason that you told me about. Um, I'm sorry, what was the number? Who asked this? Oh, nine of 2018. Okay, yeah, so this is a conversion. Uh, so I have, I want to know the flow rate in cubic meters per second. The first thing that you need to do is to calculate the flow rate. And the flow rate is going to be uh, 70 milliliters times 75 uh, beats per minute. So beats per minute. For every beat, you get 70 milliliters of blood that, that go through the heart. So that's going to be 70 times 75, what is that, about 500 or so, no, 5250, uh, 52, or 5,000, I guess, milliliters per minute. Um, actually, it looks like I kept two sig figs, so 5300, 5250. Uh, cubic centimeters, that's what a milliliter is per minute. And then I want to convert that into cubic meters per second. So I say one minute is 60 seconds. And then I also say one meter is 100 centimeters. 
But then because it's cubed, I have to cube that number. So it looks like six. What was the answer here? Is it like C or D? Y'all know? Oh, okay. I can do it. Uh, so 5,300. That's not 5,000. No, it's definitely not 5,000. That'd be a lot of cubic meters of blood going through your heart. I mean, this is in cubic so meters. Well, I was keeping two sig figs. It was actually, when you do this top 70 times 75, it's 5,250. But I was just looking at the number of sig figs that I kept, and I kept two sig figs. So that's why I went to 5,300. So 5,300 divided by 60 divided by 100 cubed is 0 0.000088. Yes, C is the right answer. Okay? Is that okay? That's just our dimensional analysis. All right, y'all. Um, I think that's all. Y'all don't leave. Let me make sure I get your names as you're walking out. Just to make sure I got your mark down.